Good morning, sweet floss tube friends. I am so overdue in coming to see you. March has been a crazy month. I'm not sure if we ever have a month that isn't crazy around here, but I have missed you and I have been anxious to get back to show you what's going on around here. Now, every night this week I have tried to film this video and my phone will stop and say your memory is gone. And we have moved photos, deleted apps. I am gonna go as fast as I can, hoping this does not happen again today. I may cry this time. We're still working on moving photos to Google Photos. I had years of photos on my phone, but what frustration to get all set up, go through the video and get three quarters of the way there and have it stop and it would not go. Oh, so we're gonna try again. I'm gonna talk faster. I hope you are well. We are at the end of March, having had a beautiful week of spring weather, and now today it is cloudy and a cold front is moving in. It is supposed to be in the 30s tonight. Texas weather. Anyway, I am happy to be here and thank you for being here. If you are new, my name is Sharon and my channel name is Magnolia Nana because I am from the South and I am a Nana to beautiful grandchildren and loving that role in my life. But welcome if you're new. Thank you for coming back if you're one of those who've been with me a while and let's cross our fingers and hope that we get this video uploaded. So I have whips, I have more whips, a couple of new things, a save the stitches, which I don't think I've ever had before, and a couple of children's books I wanna share. I do have some adult book reviews I want to give, but I don't think I'll have time today. I'll do another video next week, I promise, if this works. Mostly this month, I have been working on my Charles Wysocki Dimensions Kit. It is called Peaceful Countryside, a very old piece that we ordered from eBay. But you may remember my saying, my granddaddy was a farmer. I grew up in a small town, loved his farm and his lake. So this was perfect. I would love to get more of these old kits. I believe this one was published in 93. But we spent my spring break on the road visiting our daughter and her family in Florida. And so this kit worked really well for my travel because it is on Ada and it was easier to manage. So you can see I've gotten a lot of progress I'm almost finished with the church, not the outlining, of course, backstitching, but the white, and very close to finishing this whole background there. The barn is finished except for backstitching and maybe the little windows here. We do have a lot to do right here. Then there is another motif at the very bottom, but you know, we've talked about this being tall, long, narrow. But these were fun stitches in the car because it's one color for a while and you don't have to change as often. And then as you can see, the sky was just half cross as was part of that grass. That is not a mistake. That's how Dimensions ask you to do their kits. And this is actually the first Dimensions kit I really worked on. So... Good stitching, good fun. Can't wait to get the other animals done down here. And let me just show you the cider mill so you'll know what's at the bottom there. And another little horse and carriage. Oh, two more and two cows. So this will be fun to finish. I love his trees. Those will be a, a lot of fun to stitch. So over here, I'll have to finish the field and a little bit more there and the sky and then I can come down here and start working on the sheep and the little fence. I encourage you if you like his Americana to look for one of those. Kimberly the Distracted Stitcher messaged me that she had stashed several of these. She has not worked on them but she got some. Now my project of passion right now 
which you've seen if you've been with me every video, is Mary, Queen of Scots, Sampler by Papillon Creations. I hope you can see that. This is my project that I have started because of our love of Scotland and our heritage there. Such a fascinating historical character. Now this piece is done on 36 count cream Edinburgh linen, and forgive me if this is a little bit of a wrinkled mess because I have done a good bit of work on here. Let me show you, if I can quickly, the piece as a whole. And as I said, forgive the wrinkles. Oops, sorry, let me shake it out. Now, I don't know how much of that you're seeing, but that's what we've done so far, and I wanna show you each little small piece. Forgive me if that was weird. Okay, so I had done X, no, I had done Y. Now I finished X and Z and the small thistle. So lots more alphabet. Those letters take forever. I don't know why. And then my main progress, other than those letters, has been this band that goes under the palace and the castle. And you can see that it starts here and goes all the way. It will come to here. So I'm over halfway through. And as you can see, those motifs repeat. So I'm remembering those, which is helpful. I don't remember if I had finished my quote when I last saw you, but I'm thrilled to have that done and have it in the place it's supposed to be. So we have the phoenix here. I'll need another phoenix here. And then at the very bottom is this little medallion in the middle. So we're gonna have a mirror image over here. There's a counting error here that I've got to find frog and hopefully finish that. But if you have not done a Papillon Creations, I commend them to you. My next place to go once I have done the rest of the band, where's my band? Oh, can I see? Yes. Is to finish the bottom here. And then if I can show you in the picture, I would like to go ahead and do, sorry, that glare, the bottom border and the little corner piece and the other phoenix and, you know, get this bottom done. And then we'll see what calls. Since the top is going to be the same as the bottom, we should be good. So, loving it, still loving it. DMC 816 is the red. All right, let me show you, since it's right here under my nose, my Save the Stitches. We visited our local antique mall last weekend for a sale they have annually, semi-annually, and we always just love to browse. Some people call it junking, but we found this gorgeous needlepoint piece, which is a Renoir painting. And I do not do beautiful needlepoint, so I thoroughly appreciate this. If you can see closely her eyes and her mouth and the Renoir signature, I believe, are done in petty point as we would do one over one in cross stitch. But those colors and her face, so contemplative. And you see my blues there. We want to take this out of the frame. We have not yet because you can see it was not well framed. And there's fabric here. So we don't know how much of the design is covered up in this frame. And we will definitely hang this in our home. We love art and Renoir and beautiful needlepoint. So this is win-win indeed. And I think it's my first Save the Stitches, so I'm having fun with that. Ironically, or serendipitously, I visited a dear friend this morning who sadly lost her husband. And her hobby in the days past was needlepoint. And we had a good conversation about our handwork, and I was blessed to see many of her gorgeous works of art that she had done in the past. And she shared with me 
a very large Renoir that was the one girls at the piano that her mother had done. Those stitches and this piece had to be huge. So both of them were expert needlewomen. And now my friend, who is 83, said she would like to visit a needle workshop and maybe revive her hobby if I would go with her and I can do my cross stitch and she can do her needlepoint. So isn't that the way God works sometimes to bless us through others and their art? So while we're talking about needlepoint, I thought I would show the one treasure that I have that was my grandmother's because she also loved needlepoint. She was never able to quite get it through to me. The tension just did not suit me. But this pillow sits in a place of honor in a chair in our living room. I don't even know how many years old this is, but it was professionally finished. She did not finish this. It's a green velvet. But I feel every time I look at this, a little piece of my grandmother. And she was a woman of hard work and diligence but she did some beautiful work. So I thought I would share that. Now we have some whips. The video's still running. Oh, let's hurry. Um, I told you I would keep showing you whips for the new year as I got them organized. So you'll remember these. I'll show you very quickly. We have my blue delf, which has been and is ready to go in a nice plastic envelope. This is Design Works and I had gotten it at Joann's several years ago. So I'd like to pull this back out very soon, maybe by summer. Let me just remind you of what we've done on this. The fabric, remember, was a problem and y'all encouraged me to change it out. So I do have a simple, even weave now. And you see I had the four tiles here. The center tile is, or little motif is finished. This is the only one I've worked on, but we do have the bottom also done. I guess I've done the skeleton, right? There's no reason for me not to be working on this, except that other things have taken its place, but I commit to you all to get busy on that one because I would love to have this hanging in our kitchen or in our bedroom, but probably the kitchen because it's tiles. And then my long dog sampler that I love but put away because of a counting error that just really got me upset. This one is called Dankworth. If you remember, I purchased this because of the unicorns after the beautiful unicorns at Linlithgow Palace in Scotland. And I love long dog designs. Would do all of those if I had the time. And so the progress on this one was stopped because I need to frog and I need to figure out where to frog. This is all I have. Unicorn is fine. Love this flower square. That's just my favorite so far. Love this. The mis and this. The mistake is here. It's supposed to be an urn. I'm not even sure what's wrong, but I realized it when I was trying to finish the flower over here so that I could do the next unicorn. Love these colors so much. That blue-green with the burgundy and the pink. This is a large piece, but not as large as Mary. So it will be fairly large. It is on a beautiful linen as well. So also this one needs to come out and receive as much love as possible. I would just love to fill my walls, and at this point of time, I'm not moving fast enough. All right, and then two that I have not started, but that are calling to me. My husband had found this old leaflet of a Scottish sampler, 17th century. This is by Down Under Designs. It was published in 1986, very old. It's called Scottish Samplers. But each band, of course, has a different focus. And on the back, she gives you instructions as to how to do each band and what it is called. Now, my question as I talk really quickly is about the color colorway. I tried to pull the ones that I have. 
And as I said, it's a dark day today. I don't know if you can tell. There's a pink and a burgundy. And then I have the greens. I'll need to pull the brown, but I don't think I have it. I know you cannot really get the true color. Should I stick with the colorway or dare I change it since I'm trying to do a historic reproduction? So this is 223, 221 for the pink and burgundy. And then the greens are 3013, 3051, and 3052. If you're a sampler girl or gentleman, would you please give me your suggestions on that before I jump in with both feet? And then another new, uh, well, this was a birthday gift for my husband last year, or maybe the year before. The teapots, I, I just couldn't get enough of this. I've never done a DMC kit before. But the spring flowers of this one are just really calling my name. And as you can probably see, the flosses are beautifully organized. And this is a lovely linen that they include in this. I'm trying to see if it says. No, it doesn't really say, but I believe it's a 32 count. My birthday month is April, and I'm thinking this might be a birthday start. But again, it's going to be one of those that gets put up and not loved, I'm afraid. Maybe not. Maybe each little teapot will be a, a rewarding finish. Oh, just can't get enough of that. And to complicate my problem of stash position, I want to show you the one. I'll pull it out here. Of the coffee pots. I mean, how adorable is that? I'm hoping that's still available. I would love to have those together. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm afraid I'm going to get stopped at any minute. So I will go ahead and tell you about my children's books and then we will say goodbye. And I'll promise another video with my adult book reviews, any progress, and any life updates. So, you know, I work at a college and I ran down to our bookstore, which is Barnes and Noble in the college. And they had these books on clearance for a dollar, okay? Yes, please. This is a celebration of Beatrix Potter and famous illustrators and book authors, no, just illustrators, have written about her art and how it influenced them. I, I just cannot wait to read this. And I, I want to tell you very quickly who is included. A few people you'll know. Um, well, maybe not. I'm not recognizing. Okay, David Ezra Stein. Uh, Rosemary Wells. I've definitely heard of her. Um, oh, well. Ha! Huh. I know they're famous. Tommy, Tommy DiPaolo. Love him. But there are many children's illustrators who have written about her influence on their lives. And just to give you a little taste of how beautiful the inside is. All the pictures are color, I believe. Yes. This is Matthew Forsyth. I'm not sure which book he, books he has illustrated. But the book is just full of beauty and tribute to her work. This is John... Aggie, Aggie, but I can't wait to read from each of these contributors how they appreciate and love her work. And then, this was our other find at the Antique Mall, again, Beatrix Potter, but this is for the grandchildren. In my day, we called these paper dolls, and we loved them. You cut out the figures, and you play with them. But this one particularly has the characters, and then it has sets for the theater. I'm like, what's not to love? And it even shows them how to set up the little stage. I have grandchildren who are of an age to hopefully appreciate this. Look, all the characters. And those are the backdrops for the stage. Children's imagination can flourish right up my alley, let me tell you. Some more scenes. 
There's the rabbit hole, which I love, the kettle on the fire. So this, very old, I don't even know when it was published, but it's in precious condition, ready to cut and play. I'm hoping to spend some time with them and maybe help with the cutting so that they can play. And I do need to find a good container so they can put it away and use it again. People, it's been great to catch up a bit. And if I get cut off now, I'm going to upload it anyway. But let me say again how much I appreciate you and love reading your comments and love seeing your work. I've been so inspired lately. I don't have any shout outs this week, but I feel that I might in the next few weeks because I have found some new folks to watch. And please comment if you feel like it. Thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and share with me how you're enjoying your spring and your stitching, and we will visit again soon. Thank you so much. Bye for now.